OK, so we're going to go over some bunkai for Heian Yondan. All right, so we're going to Rylan right here. All right, so the first motion is here. All right, now, what I'd like to, like, this is kind of like a bucket too. Not super duper practical, just kind of getting an idea of what's happening here. If you were to punch toward my face, right, and I got my hands open, kind of like moving together, moving out of the way, and I'm off to the side. And I like this idea of having a back stance, because that means that my front leg looks like this, right? I also like the idea that when I shift into the next one, my knee actually goes into his, right? So what that's kind of telling me is I'm kind of raising this punch out of the way, and then I shift my knee into his, grab his arm, pull that down. I, and I, right now what I'm doing is I'm actually kneeing on the back of his leg or even onto, um, <laughs> you could feel that into his calf or a knee onto the bone of the side of the foot. So I'll go ahead and face this way so you guys can see where that knee is happening. So he's punching, boom, out of the way, knee down, kneel down. I could drive my knee into this calf or right here to the back of the foot or have my shin on there and lock his foot in place as well. Now it's not super important to kneel down with them, especially if there are other attackers, right? You don't want to go down to the ground if you don't need to. Okay, next motion. We're going to go into one, two, all right? We're kind of thinking outside of the box just a little bit here. So if Rylan is in his front stance, let's say he's coming with a front kick with his back leg. Right now, we're just going to have him land his kick right here on my belt. Okay, so essentially, I'm going to be blocking and hitting, right? So let's turn, to this, let's turn this way. I block and hit on the inside, right? Then I'm going to be folding one, left hand over, two, right hand under. Kind of like Morotoyuke. As I'm here, I step inside and I sweep his leg. Good. Pretty simple, right? As I said, we're kind of thinking outside the box a little bit. We're turning a block into a trap instead, right? So he's going to kick, hit, and step. And that's your second one. Your third one. It's going to be from here, boom, boom. And there's a few ideas behind this one. Uh, one of them being on the inside of the body, the other one being on the outside of the body. Uh, right now, we're going to do the inside of the body. So let's say he steps up to punch. OK, I'm going to be blocking that punch with my uraken and kicking right low, either to the knee. Now, it is a keage, right? So it's just meant to be a quick snap. So maybe even just a quick snap here to the lower rib or to the solar plexus, right? All right, drive in, grab the back of his head so his head can't move and the brain will rattle on the inside. Because if his head moves, it's easier on his brain. If his head doesn't move, his brain has to move somehow. So it's kind of like driving a car, stopping the car, everything in the car still moves and gets shaken, or shaken, right? So that's what's happening in his brain when I <laughs> smash right here into his face, right? So again, bam. If we were to go to the outside, maybe I'm not elbowing to his face, but maybe I'm going to do it to his arm. So he's going to punch at this left hand now. One, two, and then drive here in the elbow. Three, for maybe a snap. Okay? Again, we're keeping these pretty basic, pretty simple. Um, just kind of giving you an idea of what could happen here. I always encourage students to make it their own and to make it practical, personal and practical, okay? Those are the two things that I feel as well that are really, really important. Okay, the next option that we have is here. Boom, boom, all right? This is gonna be a little interesting, so we're gonna stick with bucket one real quick, give you guys an idea of what's going on here. So Ryland is gonna be doing a front kick with his back leg and he's gonna be landing uh, with his Kisami Suki, okay? So front kick at the back leg, there's the chop, and then punch with uh, Kisami Suki. There's the block, there's the grab, and there's the chop again, and that's this. Essentially, I'd bring this hand down, actually, because I don't want my elbow up. Okay, and there's my chop. So again, kick punch, bounce, bounce, boom. Another option 
is if he grabs my wrist with that same hand, right? So now it's down. So now I'm going to re-grip, twist it out of the way, and then strike. So he grabs my wrist, re-grip. See how that re-grip? When I twist it down, see what happens to his body? So if I strike, I can actually, instead of kick and back fist, I could just continue my strike. So instead of kicking, I could step behind him. And then my strike ended up being a takedown as well. OK? Now, um, L bucket one version again. Kick and then kisami suki. Boom. Boom. OK. And then maybe from here, he pulls back a little bit, pulls his hand free, and I kick him. Bah. He sees me coming in, he's going to throw some sort of punch, get that hand out of the way, and then strike again. All right. Whichever hand it may be, that's kind of the bucket one idea, that version one, type one. Um, not super practical. That's very choreographed, for sure. But uh, you kind of get the idea of what's happening. So again, I would take that section or parts of that section or mix it up with other parts and make it personal and practical. Our next motion is meant to turn around, wedge, and then kick, punch, punch. Okay, We're going to end up doing it from this direction. And let's say he comes for, for a grab. Open up and wedge, and I got my arms on the inside. Okay, My kick can easily be a knee. Push him off, punch, punch. Okay? Or maybe he's choking me or he's holding on to me, as you guys saw before in the uh, video. How to do chew on kakimaki, okay? So again, I have to create a wedge, but now he's tight. His elbows are in. All right? So this is very, very tight. He's, he's not going to open up easily. So I extend my arms forward and grab. And I could do a couple of things as I extend my hands forward, you know, strike into the face. Now I can knee or kick, and those are my two punches as well. Um, and again, it could be here. It could be grabbing my collar. Um, it could be a bear hug. You know, it just all kind of depends. The whole idea behind it is to understand how to create a wedge, right? And that same thing can, be, can happen if I'm on the ground. So if I'm right here and he's got me mounted, and this is especially for those that might be in a, uh, let's say a complicated relationship. Um, pretty complicated if their hands are around your throat. And he's choking me. And he's got his whole weight on me. Right? I can't do this. Even if I come in here, like he's pretty strong because he's got his whole weight on me. So if I can learn how to create a wedge, now I've got a better means of escape. Now, a person that's doing this, somebody might argue they're choking me. Somebody might argue, well, if they know jujitsu, they'll be able to take your hand from here. You're right. But he obviously doesn't know jujitsu because he's choking me like this. So that kind of gives me some hope. Like, he obviously doesn't know what the heck he's doing. So I can get a breath real quick and then continue my emotions of getting up and getting the heck out of Dodge. Right? And there's my sweaty back on the ground. All right. Continuing forward. So we're right here. Bam, boom, created a wedge, blah, or kicked, double punch. Now we're going to go into the morote uke. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the last morote uke. Um, so we're here. One, two, three, four. That section. Okay. Now, morote uke helps me understand a couple of things. You know, first of all, um, I'm understanding that this is a big motion coming toward me. And so I need a little extra support. Now, if he is punching me, like a big old oisuki, big lunch punch, lunch punch. Let's go again. All right, this is a big thing coming at me. This is a huge motion. This is pretty scary. So I'm pushing this out of the way. Well, I also don't like the fact that I have one hand here and one hand down here. I understand the idea of the support, but I'm pretty vulnerable up top now, right? Even if it was the other hand that was punching, right? I'm, I'm pretty vulnerable in this area. Things can happen that I would have a hard time preventing. So for me, what I like to do is I like to imagine a one-two punch. Okay, so he's going to 
jab and cross. So let's do the jab first. One, and I have this out, and the left hand, yes, is down, but it looks like this. It's not touching, it's right here, ready for something else. So I'm using the principles of Moro Teoke, of using both hands and having a good connection to prevent this from really hitting me. Because here, one, I drive forward, and then other hand, two. So I'm one, two, okay? So now I'm kind of using my morote hookies as I'm stepping up, except it's just kind of the same position with one. Ready? So one, two, pop, pop. Now from here, since my elbows are in and close, there's this, right? Now I don't know how many of you guys practice digging your thumbs in people's eyes. It's kind of hard to practice on your partner. So what you can do is practice putting your thumbs right on the eyebrows. What I would do for safety is I put my hand down on the face versus into the face. Now the second thing is if I'm trying to dig my thumbs into his eyes, into his face, more than likely I'm either going to sprain or break my thumb, right? That's really going to hurt me. So if this is going to happen, don't use your thumbs, just use the palm of your hand and strike inward and then grab onto something, grab to the ears, grab to the hair if they got it. He doesn't have hair as much, so I'm going to grab his ears or even to the back of his head. Okay, now from here, that's where my knee comes up. I got my knee, there's the ki. Now, instead of landing with the shuto, I'm going to place my right hand on his chin, my left hand on the back of his head, and when I land, I'm going to land, twist, and throw. And so I turn my shoot though into a throw. Okay? And those are some pretty simple basic bunkai. When practicing that last throw, this is what I recommend. One, two punch. One, two. Instead of here, right? Instead of throwing them by their chin and their neck, go here, hug them, and not only hug them, but move this arm his right arm across and hug him and put your cheek on his shoulder so it looks like this here now as I hug him tight he can't hit me and this is a much safer version of throwing him down because I'm not gonna snap his neck on accident now as I'm here and there's my throw okay so always be safe make it personal make it practical